The Gulf state of Kuwait has tightened security following the rise of ISIL in that region, and gains by ISIL in neighboring Iraq have especially heightened concerns. That plus the discovery that Jihad John was born in Kuwait has officials on edge. Natalie Carney has her story from Kuwait City. Kuwait has suffered a rough history of aggression from outsiders. In the early 1990s, Kuwait was invaded by Iraq, and today the threat comes from extremist groups such as the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. Their leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, threatened to occupy the Gulf state in order to take revenge and fight against America, forcing the small emirate to beef up security. Yet, growing threats are also emerging from inside the country, a subject terribly taboo for the majority of peaceful Kuwaiti citizens. This is the neighborhood of Thaima. It's about an hour away from Kuwait city center. It's in this neighborhood that the man known as Jihadi John was born and spent the first six years of his life. And the people here are asking themselves, how could one of their own become one of the world's most wanted men? From this poor conservative neighborhood, Jihadi John, or Mohammed Mwazi, is now known to the world as the masked man brandishing a knife in a number of extremely disturbing ISIL beheading videos. A prominent Kuwaiti imam and university professor, Shafi al-Ajmi, was finally arrested following months of inciting extremism after he boasted of slaughtering Shia Muslims and their sons with knives in Syria. No, there is sympathizer with al-Qaeda element, with ISIS, and with the Muslim Brotherhood, but, you know, they are keeping quiet because I think uh, the Kuwaiti government, you know, they were uh, in good terms with the fundamentalists. But now they felt they, they, they are uh, you know, dangerous to the society, and they have to worry from them uh, because of what they are doing in the region. The government was also criticized for appointing a religious hardliner and another university professor named Naif al-Ajmi as Kuwait's justice minister and minister of Islamic affairs and endowments. He later resigned, but not before the United States accused him of funding terrorism and calling Kuwait a permissive environment for terrorist fundraising. Kuwait is a rich country, and the Kuwaiti are I mean, relatively rich people. And those fundamentalists, for example, the Muslim Brotherhood in Kuwait, that you are considered ATM machine of the Muslim Brotherhood of Egypt. <laughs> because they are considered something like that, because they don't uh, participate in the uh, objectives of this movement. They all, their only role is funding these movements. <laughs> Kuwait recently hosted the third international humanitarian pledging conference for Syria, where 3.8 billion U.S. dollars was promised. Yet it's been argued that in the past, Kuwaiti money has been used to prop up extremist groups in Syria, contributing to the humanitarian disaster. While the Kuwaiti government has introduced strict new laws to try and stop extremist speech and funding, some feel the ideological support is still there. Natalie Carney for CCTV in Kuwait City, Kuwait.